I'm gonna remove buck type. No! But why not? It's pretty much the same reasons of why I'm not having a dragon type. No! Alright, look. I really like the buck type in Pokemon. Insects, arachnids, even other arthropods. Anything that's creeping or crawling could be considered this type. Kinda like the dragon type, the bug type is a type that's based off of like a certain group of body plants. Dragons are lizard-like and bugs are mostly jointed or larvae. Wait, what are bugs? Look away if you don't want to see real bug images for the next few seconds starting now. So, <laughs> technically, true bugs are only a specific order of animals called Hemiptera, uh, which includes cicadas, tree hoppers, and shield bugs. And even more technically, the suborder Heteroptera in Hemiptera are sometimes called the truest bugs. Bug image is over. But the bug type is more than that, right? It's a flavor about being spooky and crawly, yet in an innocent way because they're not spiritual or malicious, unlike Ghost and Dart. They just look unappealing. In the most, like, normie sense. <laughs> so why did Pokemon have this type in the first place? Maybe it has to do with how Pokemon started off being based off of how Satoshi Tajiri's childhood pastime was catching and sharing bugs? Is it supposed to be the underdog type that's canonically the weakest? I mean, here's the type chart for the first generation, which honestly here it seems pretty balanced. But over time, it got endlessly bullied to the point that it's probably the weakest type by now. I mean, this alone won't be the reason for me to remove a type. It's different from how I removed dragon type because it was supposed to be the ultimate type that's stronger than the others. Having an underdog type would be fine if it meant that they got strong supporting moves like grass types, having spore, strength sap, leech seed. But for me, it kind of circles back to how both bug and dragon type kind of feel exclusive to Pokemon. I mean, what is a game that also uses bug as an elemental energy? I mean, Temtem and Koromon don't even have analogs for this type. And trust me, I love bug type mons, ranging from scrungly to dope. And I even named a critter type for a while, but I think I might have to axe it. Unlike my other two videos about cutting types, this is a very recent thought for me. Heck, I've even shared designs with this type. So how would things change? Firstly, the larving line being computer bugs would all be electro type. And secondly, well, let me show you some other bugs I have. Speaking of true bugs, I had a true bug bug in my project. Warning again for real bug images in 3, 2, 1. Ever heard of the spittle bug? It's a little bug that lives in their bubble home. It kind of looks like spit, but it's pretty stinky. The bugs inside are actually nymphs, little babies that grow into frog hoppers. They've got a sleek and cool design. Alright, bug image is over. Alright, cool species. But I want to convey a cool concept to go with it. So, what else is bubbly? Well, soap bubbles. So here's Sopal, who looks like a bar of soap and is now pure fairy type or charm type. Honestly, I could use some more monotypes in my project, especially since I don't have other designs to include. Unlike how Pokemon has the liberty of choosing between the hundreds of past designs to populate their next game with. So how does soap work? Well, soap is an emulsifier. The heck is an emulsifier? Alright, so you could try washing your hands with water, right? But some of the grime, especially oily grime, won't come off well because, well, oil and water don't mix. Chemically, they're called being non-polar and polar, respectively. Soap is kind of a mediator. It has a polar head that could be pulled by water, and a non-polar tail, which could attach to oily grime. There are these formations called micelles, where they are essentially globs of oil contained in a coating of amphiphilic compounds like soap. These amphiphilic compounds are seen in quite a lot of places than you think. So, Sapopper so here, has these patterns with bubbles as decorations. Alright, hello fellow video viewer. You've probably heard of this word thrown a lot by content creators, like, oh, I hope this hits the algorithm, or 
comment Bazinga to boost me in the algorithm. Please, please, please don't comment Bazinga. It'll probably make it worse for me. But what is an algorithm anyways? It's a set of rules to follow when solving a problem. For search engines like Google or YouTube search, you input a query and then that algorithm takes that and calculates what you were probably looking for. That algo might emphasize some other hot terms and other factors, but let's step back and talk about a much simpler algorithm, a sorting algorithm. Say you got a random list of numbers and you want to organize them from smallest to largest. How do you do that efficiently? Let me start with a jokey answer called the BOGO sort. In BOGO sort, you just shuffle the whole list randomly over and over again <laughs> with no thought in mind, no sense, just mashing the shuffle button again and again until it's all miraculously ordered. I mean, one of the combinations has to be right, right? So here's Mon Bogo, a monkey who would just mash buttons if it has the chance to. Don't put it near Compupa. This design also references that saying of giving a bunch of monkeys infinite time and infinite typewriters, and they might randomly type Shakespeare out one day. Monbuggo is just a normal type. So wait, why am I talking about this in the bug video? In algorithms, efficiency can be written in something called big O notation. So this is just about the algorithm, doesn't care about the toaster you're running it with, just the rules themselves. N here is how big that list is, and you can find values of big O in the best, worst, and typical scenarios. One sorting method is called the tree sort, where you have a binary search tree. Placing the next number on the list either on the left or right of your other numbers after comparing that number with the tree that you're building. There's only two paths that the value could take, like it's either smaller or bigger than the number you're comparing with. Unless the number overlaps where you could just plop it right next to the other duplicate. So, a telgo is a spider monkey that represents the binary search tree. Each limb has two spikes coming out. It used to be a normal bug type because of the spider aspect, but now, I don't know. I was thinking of making a normal psychic. Maybe even normal dendro if I choose that name for the grass type because dendro means trees. But despite being a binary search trait, it does have a different flavor to it. So should I remove the bug type? Say I want to distance myself from Pokemon when I'm making my own game here. And I don't know, this still leaves me with 15 types. I'll set up a poll on my community tab, but honestly 16 types is a good number to have. So ideally, I'll sacrifice this bug type for a completely new custom type. But that sounds like a topic for another video, doesn't it? So thank you for watching. And especially thank you to my patrons from Patreon. Some of the higher tiers would have access to behind the scenes sketches and other bonus content. But if you like these videos, you could always subscribe and share the video for free. I even have a whole playlist of all the videos that include my stem based mods so far. So thank you all again, and I'll see you next time.